What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna be talking about one of the most anticipated guns of 2020 that actually kind of came out in 2021. Out of all the guns that I've had requests for, this is one of the most. I mentioned that in the first shots video. If you haven't seen that, feel free to go over and check that out. The Palmetto State Dagger. There's a few reasons why this thing was highly touted, especially at SHOT Show last year. And there's quite a few things I like about it. Some things I don't like about it. And what we've done here is basically put a thousand rounds through the gun over the course of several months in different range and uh, environmental conditions with different ammunition to try to figure out what exactly is my overall opinion. But before we do that, I want to thank my patron supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you I was able to purchase this gun. I was not sent this gun like a lot of other reviewers. I bought this gun for a little bit extra so I could get it early. So I thank you for that. I also appreciate you guys for helping support me with ammunition and all that fun stuff. If you want to join the Patreon squad, all you got to do is go down to the link in the description. Some exclusive content over there on Patreon, so feel free to sign up. Also, I want to mention a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa, in the description below. Just click that link, donate to those kids. They could use your help. Now, the Palmetto State Dagger is a gun that the MSRP is so low that it has an awful lot of people interested. Based on the Glock 19 Gen 3, it is a 4-inch, 9mm uh, striker-fired pistol. It is 22 ounces overall weight, making it slightly lighter than the uh, Gen 3 Glock, I do believe. And it comes with some interesting features to it that make it pretty impressive. First off, it comes with steel sights instead of the traditional plastic uh, Glock sights uh, like, well, I got my Glock slide here somewhere. These. This is actually a Gen 5 slide and a Gen 5 gun that I replaced the slide on that we're going to use for comparison here to give you kind of a perspective on what you can get modern day. Even though it's based on the Gen 3, the Gen 5s currently exist, so you could either get this or this, so we'll talk about them both together. Now, the pistol in itself, as I said, is a 3.9 inch barrel, sorry, not 4 inch, and it has a DLC coating with uh, steel sights on it that are white dot sights that are an improvement upon the standard plastic sights. It also comes with front slide serrations that the Gen 3 did not. It's got the carry cuts. I think that's a different model, which we'll talk about here in a minute as well. It's got a different trigger mechanism. It's got a hinge trigger very similar to the uh, M&P there. It's got a cutout for the magazine release, very a la Gen 3. It has an accessory rail. It also has wavy cuts in the front there to make it look kind of cool. And it's for you nothing fancy folks out there who want to run your trigger finger in front of the trigger guard. It's also got an enhanced grip compared to the Gen 3. Doesn't have the back straps, which we'll talk about. And it has the uh, carry cutout, so if you want to strip the magazine, you can do so with no issue whatsoever. It's also got a little bit of lip up here, which I'm not the biggest fan of. And then it also has the finger groove, which is very similar to the previous Glock models, which the Gen 5 did away with. Now, it's got a little bit enhanced texture upon the Gen 3, but not nearly uh, as good as the Gen 5, in my personal opinion, with an extended beaver tail, which I really do like. Now it's got standard control, standard Glock takedown with a standard Glock slide lock or slide release, whichever one you want to say, depending on which uh, manual you're quoting there. Uh, everybody always says it's a slide lock. It's not supposed to be used for a release, but you can put your thumb on there and release a slide if you want, so take that to the bank. It's got some wavy cuts in the front here, which you can use as sort of a gas pedal, although those are more aesthetic than anything, considering that there's not really enough there for you to actually get your thumb on and use as a gas pedal, even though that's kind of what it's intended. It's more of just putting your thumb there for placement, honestly, and uh, yeah. I could give or take that. I would prefer it actually be cut out and used as a gas pedal, similar to this guy. There's actually models like, uh, I can't remember which models have those uh, from the factory or not, but Agency Arms does that for you and all kinds of other companies. Now it's got kind of a tri-top slide here, which I like a lot. I'm a big fan of that particular look. Man, that looks good. Uh, the slide on the dagger actually looks better than the stock Gen 5, in my personal opinion, which is saying a lot. And they also have very usable front slide serrations, as you can see there, while we use them to show you uh, the stainless steel guide rod, which I actually think is a big improvement upon the standard Glock plastic guide rod. Uh, do I think you should upgrade it? Uh, maybe if you want to, uh, but I do like that it's a little more durable, and I do like it adds a little weight out front, reducing muzzle flip overall. 
Now, some of the disadvantages to it, in my opinion, are going to be the hinge trigger, which we'll get into in a little bit. And obviously for the $300 price point, you are not going to get an optic system like the MOS system on the Glock here. Now, it's not a perfect system, but it certainly is a system and something is usually better than nothing. And in this case, it certainly is. If you don't like the MOS system or dog hair in your Glock, you could always get rid of your uh, dog or you could go and get one of those agency arm plates, put it in there, and then the MOS system is pretty viable. I've ran it for a while and it works better than nothing. So overall, I think that there's a lot of interesting changes to the dagger, which makes it a pretty viable option for the MSRP. Now we ran a thousand rounds through the gun and in the course of the testing, we found that it was very reliable. It had zero malfunctions through a thousand rounds of testing, which I kind of expected. If you're gonna base it off one of the most reliable guns in the world, it better be as reliable or what's really the point. We shot a bunch of Phoenix Reman. We shot a bunch of Fiocchi as usual. We shot some Winchester White Box. We shot some 124 grain Gold Dot and then we shot some Critical Duty and all of it performed excellent. Uh, we shot it through its magazine that it came with, which I think was a Magpul magazine. And then we also ran the standard Gen 5 Glock 19, and Glock 17, and the extended magazines through it as well. And no malfunctions whatsoever, which is nice because without the magazine compatibility, again, what's the point? That's one of the biggest selling points of the old Glock clones after all. So it does come with one magazine. That's what you're gonna get for your money with the standard Gen 5 coming with three magazines, which in my opinion is kind of a better bang for your buck because more magazines is always better. Accuracy on the Palmetto State Dagger is all right. Honestly, in my opinion, the uh, standard Gen 5s are definitely going to be more accurate. Reason being, is they have a better trigger. I don't particularly like the Palmetto State Dagger trigger at all. I don't really care about it. They should have left it in the Gen 1 MMP where they found the damn thing. This thing is heavy. It has a lot of creep, a lot of take up, and it has kind of a crappy reset as well, along with that hinge mechanism being something, as I said, that should have been left in the past. So I don't like the trigger. The good news is, is that it does take Gen 3 parts. So you could upgrade it for one of those new sweet old Timneys if you so choose. And uh, if I were to keep this gun, that is what I would do. However, I'm probably not gonna keep this gun, but if I did, that's what I would do. So the trigger sucks. And then the big white combat sights are good up close and are very simplistic and are more durable than these standard Glock sights. However, being slightly better than the worst sights on the market are not really that good, <laughs> honestly. Um, you can buy Gen 5 Glocks that have these, the Amerigo sights, and I would absolutely recommend these. These are significantly better in my opinion. A Little bit wider box to allow you a quicker sight acquisition up close. Thinner front sight that's high def and night sights on it, or sorry, it's got a tritium insert on the front sight allowing you to use the sights at night which is 50% of your life. So I like the fact that the Gen 5s have that option. However, it's obviously gonna cost you more. And obviously you could buy those sites for $60 and put them in these if you want to, because again, compatible with Glock parts. So out of the box, I don't like the accuracy, although it can be improved. As far as the barrel goes, uh, is it as high quality as the Marksman barrel from the Gen 5? I don't know, you're at the wrong channel for that, <laughs> to be honest with you. The accuracy that people concern themselves with in reviews is mechanical accuracy, which always cracks me up because it's a freaking handgun, and handguns are hard to shoot. There's less points of contact on them. The five pound trigger with a one pound gun versus a, one, or a five pound gun with a one pound trigger, like a rifle, for example. So they're very difficult to shoot to begin with. So all the accuracy setbacks that you're probably gonna have is due to the ergonomics and the interface with the gun, and that's what we like to talk about on this channel. Primarily the sights, what your eyes see, and the trigger, what your finger pulls presses, pushes, whatever terminology you want to use these days. So the point I'm trying to make is, as far as mechanical accuracy, is it as accurate as a standard Glock? Probably. Are you going to get it out of it? Probably not. So moving on to the ergonomics. I think there's a lot of really good ergonomic things going on with the Palmetto State Dagger. Number one, I love the tri-top slide. It looks very cool. And I also love the very usable slide serrations that are actually more usable than the Gen 5 Glock. It took Glock five times to get these fucking things here. And it took Palmetto State once to get these here. And these work better. So um, one for one as far as the slide serrations go. The rear serrations work very well as well. And the finish that they put on 
the gun is probably not quite as durable as the Gen 5, but it's shiny, and I like that. Uh, takedown's still the same, and they put a higher cut here on, on the undercut of the trigger, which allows people with slightly less goony hands to get a higher grip. However, you can see their mind don't fit, so I'd have to Dremel that out. Another thing they did was a lip on the bottom of the grip here, which some people will certainly like, but I don't because there's not enough space for my hand to begin with, so it makes my pinky finger very uncomfortable to have to press into that lip. Apparently, this built gun was built by, uh, I don't know, gnomes or something. And then, obviously, the finger grooves are back. And the reason why Glock got rid of the finger groove was because it doesn't fit all people the best, so usually having a flat front is better. And in this case, same concept. Uh, my, my fingers are too big for the finger groove, making it uncomfortable for me to shoot the gun. So I was going to keep it. I'd shave that bitch off. Now, something they did do right, in my opinion, was the width of the grip and the overall ergonomics of the grip, which are slightly different. So they do, f the grip itself feels a little bit fuller and easy to use. There's gotta be a joke in there somewhere for that. And overall, the hump is a little less pronounced, which I do like. The texture is pretty decent as well for uh, a Glock clone. That being said, they also didn't use the back straps because it's like a Gen 3 clone, and for some reason you can't engineer this to work with back straps. But whatever, uh, I actually don't like this gun a lot because of that specific niche. And I know people don't use the back straps, they think they're gimmicky, but I got the big Jack Skellington hands, so I like a lot of reach between my uh, web of my hand, oop, flicked you off there, and the uh, trigger finger that I use to uh, obviously pull the trigger. So. I like the backstraps a lot and it does help me uh, increase my accuracy because it changes the placement of the spot on my finger which I use to interface with the trigger. So I like the backstraps, this doesn't have them, that sucks for me. On top of that, they have the wavy things up here, which I do like. However, on this uh, particular model, it seems like it just has a little bit more sharp edges than the standard Glock. It seems a little less refined to me personally. And what I mean by that is these are kind of uncomfortable to use. The magazine release is kind of uncomfortable to get to. Uh, all this stuff is great until you smoke yourself in the stomach with that way you're reholstering. There's just a little bit less finesse with this gun, which you would expect for a gun coming in at a little bit like two thirds the MSRP to one half of the MSRP. So you're gonna have to consider that when you actually buy the gun, if you can find the gun, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, the last thing I don't really like about the Palmetto State Dagger is these gigantic cuts in the grip to uh, strip magazines, which was done significantly better than the original Gen 5s that had the front cut, which was a fucking disaster. However, these, I mean, wow, do they need to be that big? They cut like half the grip off to actually get the magazine out of the gun. Uh, you'd have been way better off making the magazine release bigger, which they did on the Gen 4 and Gen 5s. Uh, however, yeah, it works. If you have to strip a magazine that you like super glued in there, that, that might help you out, but I don't like it. I, I don't like sacrificing even more of the grip when the grip is already relatively uncomfortable to me. But if you have smaller hands than me, that's probably not going to be an issue and disregard all that bullshit. So overall, I think that they've done some improvements on the Gen 3. However, so is the damn Gen 5. And so have a lot of other Glock clones out there like the, uh, the name escapes me, like the War Poet, the MR92. And there's several others out there that do a pretty good job. Job, but they don't come in at the MSRP of $300. But, spoiler alert, neither does the dagger. The, the dagger comes in right now, if you could find one, at between five and $600, making it exactly the same price as the standard Gen 5 Glock. The difference being is that you can find one of these in any gun store, but you can't find this one. Now, obviously, you're going to have to timestamp this review at the time of the review because as uh, production increases, they're probably going to be more and more available if they're more and more successful, but only time will tell on the dagger whether or not that will actually be the case. Now, the cool part about the dagger is Palmetto is offering tons of other uh, models of this in different Cerakotes with thread barrels and things of that nature and that's something Glock simply does not do so big power to them for that right off the bat 
That being said, is it worth the money in my opinion currently as of time of review? And I would go definitely not. If you can find one of these between three and like say $450, then yeah, go ahead. Especially if you are into it and that kind of thing. But would I pay the same price for a standard Gen 5, which has a better trigger, comes with more magazines, is available literally everywhere, and has basically all of the same features as the dagger, in addition to having the back straps and several other things we just talked about I, I would definitely go gen 5 in my personal opinion on top of that the glocks themselves have an incredibly proven durable and reliable track record whereas something like this clone may not necessarily that being said i'm not too sure about the quality of the internal parts as the two go but uh, maybe somebody in the comment section can comment on that i'm not really sure what materials and what metals they use on this versus this however they do use a dlc coating on this which i think is probably more superior to the glock which i really do like so there's a few things on the dagger i like if they could be become more available especially for the msrp that they're promised i think they could really be a big hit but if they don't they'll just be another footnote and another glock clone uh, throughout history that didn't quite measure up if you like this video please like and subscribe please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle i'll check you later